Do you want to lower your cholesterol? In this video, I'm going to help you with the list of the best and worst foods. The foods that can help lower your cholesterol and the foods that raise it, which you'll want to avoid. So, pay attention. Do you think olive oil is better than pork fat? Is pork fat healthy? Is it good? I'm going to talk about that too. At the end, I'm going to answer this question, olive oil versus pork fat. Which one is better? Well, is cholesterol necessary for our health? Yes, cholesterol is necessary for life. But what's bad is excess cholesterol. That's been linked to cardiovascular diseases, like stroke and heart attack, for example. So excess cholesterol is bad. Bookmark that. But we need cholesterol for the production of hormones like cortisol, vitamin D, and testosterone, as well as for digestion and bile salts. So cholesterol is essential, but high levels are unhealthy. That's why it's important to focus on maintaining optimal cholesterol levels. What are optimal levels? They vary for each individual. That's why there's debate about whether cholesterol is good or bad. The level that's healthy for me might be hazardous for you. For example, a 30-year-old athlete without high blood pressure or diabetes might have an LDL level of 130. This level, also known as bad cholesterol, would be okay for them. Now consider another person with diabetes, high blood pressure, and a history of heart attacks. An LDL of 130 would be too high for that person. So it depends on the individual. Is it possible to lower cholesterol through diet? Many people, including doctors, don't believe so. About 70% of our cholesterol is produced by our own bodies in the liver. This is called endogenous cholesterol. These 70% cannot be changed, but the remaining 30% comes from food. This is known as exogenous cholesterol. So we managed to modify that 30%. So this narrative that you can't do anything with diet is a big lie. There's a large part of cholesterol that you can indeed modify and improve its levels. Many times a person is right on the edge, and with that 30%, they can hit their target, reach the good level for them. So you definitely need to pay attention to your diet and lifestyle habits. Two other habits that also help in reducing cholesterol besides diet are physical exercise and weight control. This is scientifically proven. And what are the nine worst ones? The ones you're going to avoid? Foods you need to be very cautious about. And also the top five. There's a food, these five here, that just by consuming it, your cholesterol can drop by 8%, which is very significant, just by adding one food. So pay attention. First, let's set a like goal for this video. 100,000 likes, a pretty audacious goal. So do me a favor and like this, because that way the system knows the video is important and more people can access it. A lot of people end up taking medications for cholesterol, which has other side effects. And with this information, they could often better manage their levels. I'm not telling you to quit any kind of medication. That's not what I'm saying. What I mean is that if you could better control your food, health, and lifestyle habits, your doctor may even be able to lower your medications, make positive alterations, you gain a better quality of life without any side effects, without the negative effects of medications. Well, so what are these items you need to pay attention to? There's nine of them. The first item I wanted to highlight here is bacon. Ah, but bacon is so good. Bacon is high in saturated fats and will up your cholesterol levels. There are saturated fats which raise cholesterol and there are also good fats. Monounsaturated fats and polyunsaturated fats. I'll discuss later which foods have these types of fats, but bacon, has a type of fat that will raise your bad cholesterol, known as saturated fats. They can increase LDL. We've already seen that LDL has been linked to cardiovascular disease, specifically when there's too much LDL. So the number one, bacon. Number two, sour cream. This also applies to other dairy products, particularly whole grain products. Have you ever heard that sour cream was healthy? I've heard it several times, but that's a big problem. I'm going to group here. Number two, cheeses especially yellow cheeses, such as cheddar, are also high in saturated fats. Number three, processed meats, salami, copa, sausage, bologna. These foods, besides being high in saturated fats, have preservatives like nitrate and nitrite, which have been linked to an increase in stomach and colorectal cancer. So pay attention to these foods. If possible, avoid them as much as possible because they are rich in preservatives. In addition to worsening cholesterol and other conditions, they are high in sodium, which can increase blood pressure. So you have to be very careful with the cold cuts. Number three, I'm going to put 
an asterisk here, number three. If it's homemade, a lot of people asked in the other video I talked about, it's a lot less bad because they won't have the preservatives, they won't have the nitrates and nitrites because you will control what you're putting in there. But even so, it's going to have a high amount of saturated fats. So even so, you have to be careful. Number four, ice cream. Ice cream has a type of fat called trans fat, which increases even more, which is worse for cholesterol than saturated fat. So you have to be very careful with the ice cream. If you go to a party, you go to a graduation party. For example, there's a container of ice cream. It's not a spoonful that will do all this damage to your health. But I want you to pay special attention too to avoid the ice cream. Some people might say, oh, but there's a brand that's already taken out the trans fat, but it still has a lot of saturated fat. So even if it doesn't have that type of fat that I talked about initially, it's still going to be high in saturated fat. So you need to avoid it. So pay attention to ice cream. Even though it doesn't seem like it, it also looks like a healthy food cold there especially if it's hot outside, but it's going to raise your cholesterol and you need to be careful. You need to avoid ice cream. Number five, butter. You have this habit of sealing the bread, putting butter on it, giving it that little seal, so you're significantly increasing the level of saturated fats, okay? Even if you don't seal the bread, if you put it on there, make a sandwich, for example, and put butter on it, It'll also raise your cholesterol. If possible, eliminate butter from your diet. Why? Because it's high in saturated fats and it'll mess with your metabolism. Not to mention it's a very high calorie food. Moreover, you will consume too many calories that can result in increased adipose tissue, fat tissue, and even worsen insulin resistance. Raise the level of sugar in the blood due to the surplus calories, okay? So in addition to having saturated fats, it's high in calories. You drastically raise the calories of a meal just by adding butter to it, among the sandwich ingredients, for instance, or by spreading it on bread. Bread already has a considerable amount of carbs. You should exercise caution, but if you add butter, it exacerbates the situation. So be careful with butter, okay? Avoid it if you can. Number six, coconut oil. But isn't coconut oil one of the best foods in the world? No, there's a significant differentiation concerning coconut oil. It has various applications like skin care, for instance, but as a diet component, it is laden with saturated fats. It's also high in calories, and one should take heed with saturated fats as they can elevate bad cholesterol. But they told me it doesn't increase. It's a myth. Yes, it does increase. Coconut oil is not all that wonder that many people talk about here on the internet. Number seven, fatty meats. Who doesn't like picana? But if you eat it with the fat, I know that many people will say that it is good and all that. I understand that. But fatty meats, that meat that you see the fat itself. Red meat already has a slightly higher fat level. If it's these meats with the fat itself, even more so. So you have to be careful with this type of fat. If you are taking care of cholesterol, okay? Because these foods, very fatty ribs, for example, they will increase your cholesterol. You have to be a little careful for us to reach that goal I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Number eight, poultry skin. Do you know that little skin that comes with the chicken? A drumstick, for example. The chicken meat itself is very healthy, but the skin of poultry is high in fats. If you're taking care of your cholesterol, you have to remove that skin, okay? It's going to make a lot of difference if you take a drumstick. For example, remove the skin. It's going to be better for your cholesterol. In addition to taking care, in addition to incorporating the best foods for cholesterol, you have to be careful too, okay? With the skin of poultry, many people think, oh no, it's fine. They said eating white meat, eating chicken is good, but if it has skin on it, it will increase your cholesterol. Number nine, this one you already know, which is French fries, fried foods. You're frying them in oil. You're increasing a lot the amount of fat, saturated fats in these foods. So you have to avoid French fries. Not that it's totally forbidden, but you have to know that it's going to increase your cholesterol. 
And which ones are the best? Before I talk about the best five, I invite you, if you're not subscribed to the channel, to subscribe, activate the notification bell. This way, always when I post, YouTube will warn you. It will send you a notification. You can follow the new videos updated in health. Here I talk a lot about diabetes, thyroid, cholesterol, hormones. Starting the top five list at number one, I'm going to include beans, lentils, chickpeas. To reduce cholesterol, we basically have two ways, through diet or foods rich in fiber, like beans, lentils, and also chickpeas, which will decrease cholesterol absorption. Or it's the case with foods that have good fats, monounsaturated fats. But I want you to take note of this. Beans, lentils, chickpeas are number one, can help, can reduce cholesterol by up to 5%, which is significant. They are fiber-rich foods. Number two, eggplant. Here I'm not talking about eggplant juice or eggplant capsules. Well, it's about eating eggplant because it's also a food that has a type of fiber that decreases the absorption of cholesterol and can improve the fat profile in blood. The lipid profile. So, if you're taking care of your cholesterol, it's worth adding eggplant to your diet. Number three, salmon, tuna, sardines are cold water fish that are rich in omega-3. Omega-3 is widely studied in improving blood fats, lowering cholesterol, and can also increase the good cholesterol, HDL. So, it's worth including foods that are rich in omega-3 in your diet, such as salmon. Number four, chia, flaxseed, oatmeal. What fiber do you consume? I really like chia. I like to put it in my diet, but let's talk about them. These fibers can help reduce cholesterol, and there's one, which is oats, which has been widely studied, can reduce cholesterol by up to 8% which is very, very significant just for one food. And then you're thinking, oh, but I'm diabetic. When I eat oatmeal, my blood sugar, my glucose goes up. This is a great truth. Even though cholesterol is healthy, if you're diabetic, you have to be careful with oats because they're high in carbohydrates, in sugars. In this case, it's better to opt for other fibers like chia, like I did, because you can get by with less Put in a smaller amount and it doesn't have as much sugar as many carbohydrates as oatmeal but if you don't have a problem with blood sugar with blood glucose levels oatmeal is indeed a great option and what's number five what's the best food for lowering cholesterol one of the healthiest foods here i'm going to answer that question of lard versus olive oil which is better the best is olive oil because it is rich in good fats, monounsaturated fats, which can help reduce cholesterol, including reducing the risk of heart attack, risk of stroke. But what about lard? They said that lard was healthy. That's a myth. Lard is rich in saturated fats. It can increase your risk of cardiovascular disease. So the best choice is olive oil. Many people think this way. Ah, but my grandparents in the old days, people ate and consumed lard and didn't have a heart attack or stroke. That's a big myth. Okay, guys? If you take 100 years, in 1920, for example, the life expectancy was 34 years. So the life expectancy was not 100, 120 years, as many people end up spreading. Of course, there were people who were longer lived, who lived longer, but the average, the life expectancy was 34 years, okay? So that's a big myth here on the internet. What grade do you give this video from 0 to 10? If it's 10, I'll make more videos like this. I also put the city you're talking about. I'm talking about Porto Alegre. What part of the world do you belong to? Right here for me. I always like to read the comments. Now I'll leave a recommendation for you to watch. It's a video where I talked about diabetes. Do you know the 14 signs, the initial signs of diabetes? In this video here, I talk about it. If you click here, You'll be sent to this video. You'll learn more about this disease that is also so common. A hug.